we knew this day would come. Ever since we banished the messenger from Mordor, we have been building up our defenses, training our troops and repairing our machinery of old. For we are very much aware that Sauron would not take our refusal in kind. His wrath will be terrible, his retribution swift. Earlier today a scout from Dale arrived, warning us of mobilization in the east. Of course Sauron would send his lackeys to do his dirty work for him. Nevertheless, we shall welcome this golden horde with open arms. Typically, we dwarves delve deep through rock and stone to reach gold. Not often does the gold come to us. And so their gleaming armor and shiny helmets will make for excellent trophies and jewelry, and will fund the many wars to come. I have sent a messenger to the Lokan of Rune, not to negotiate, no, but to war. A dragon took our precious mountain from us once. That dragon now rests on the bottom of Lake Escaro. If the Mama's Dragon of Rune wants to take his chances, he will meet the same fate. Now come, my warriors, let us feast on beer and pork tonight. For tomorrow we shall reign in bloodshed and crush the Golden Horde. Greetings my beloved friends and welcome back to the 6th episode of our Dwarves of Erebor campaign in 3rd Age Total War Divide and Conquer with AGO and Swan's Dwarven TLC mod. In the last episode we uh, completely vanquished the Orcs of Gundabad, taking Yorlstone and Framsburg and just completely annihilating the faction. We will never ever ever have to worry about them which is a great feeling and something I kind of suck at in many campaigns. I typically leave my enemies with like one or two settlements thinking oh you know they're pretty much dead and I never get round to completely demolishing them down to their last molecule and I always end up regretting that so I was very adamant to not make that mistake in this campaign. The Oaks of Gundabad are dead and they will never ever bother us again. Uh, we do of course now border Angmar which is a bit scary we need to be uh, just Keep an eye on them. We're not at war with them yet, but if they suddenly start mobilizing troops or start building up forces at Litash, kind of need to be ready for that. We don't want to send Gimli to a certain death by uh, keeping him in mind Gundabad for now. We also border the Goblins of Moria, who should have their hands full with uh, the men of the Anduin Vale, now that they don't have to worry about their northern flank. But uh, we'll see how they cope. We're not going to let them deal with it alone. We will help them. But first things first, we have more pressing matters to attend to, which is of course the inevitable invasion of Erebor by the Easterlings of Rune. We are pretty much prepared for it, we still have one more trick up our sleeve, the catapult, which will be finished next turns, and I think the attack will happen in two turns, but we'll see. Now I'm not sure what to expect from the attack, I don't know how many troops they'll throw at us, we'll have to see. Uh, I could check once again for mercenaries, Pff, extra deal cap, I'll take it. Because some people have indeed pointed out that it would make sense for Dale to help us out, right? We've been through uh, a lot of shit together. If Rune suddenly attacks, not only would we be caught unaware, wouldn't really make sense, uh, Dale would absolutely send reinforcements, so... There we go. But let them come. As long as dwarves live in Erebor, then no enemy shall set foot inside. Which is also an event that did happen during the events of the Third Age. Uh, while well, during the events of the War of the Ring, an attack by the Easterlings of Rune. And I think both King Dane and King Bane of Dale at that point died. I think Bane died and then Dane died defending Bane's body. It's very hard to <laughs> have such similar names. Alright, talk to Dolamroth. Perfect. I was planning on doing that. Hello, my old friend. How are you? How is Garlu treating you in his campaign? I haven't watched it, to be honest. But I will watch it. I mean, a legend as Garlu, he, he's been doing YouTube way before I did it, so I do understand that he's burned out of it. And if he does his last, like, swan song campaign, and it is Dol Amaroth, then one has to watch that, right? Uh, Witherboard got the mining network. Excellent. Already raking in quite a bit of money. I can already train troops here as well, which is most welcome. Uh, I think I want to prioritize roads, because my empire is kind of stretched out. So if I can get troops from one side of it to the other quite rapidly, that does help. There are two paths I can take. But mm, I think roads also bring in a nice amount of money. Let's see, 477. 910, that almost doubles my uh, trade income. Yes, yes, yes. Framsburg at the Stoneworkers Hall, good. Um, 
What do I want? Mines? They're not very good mines. Iron Monkey's Monster Stomachers Hall. I guess a brewery for culture. I did ask you guys' opinion last time on whether or not to keep Yolstone and Franzburg, and there were opinions in both directions. Some said keep it, some said give it to the Anduin Vale, some said keep Yolstone, give Franzburg to the Anduin Vale, etc. etc. But I think most people were in favor of me uh, just keeping it. So that's what I will do. Uh, and if you don't agree with that, well, that's okay. I mean, there's always an opportunity for you to do your own campaign if you don't like the choices I make. And that's kind of the thing, right? A lot of people watch these campaigns. It always blows my mind, but like, I don't know, like, these videos. Episode 1 always gets a lot of views, but like, even episodes 2, 3, they get like over 10k views. So I can't do my campaign the way everyone agrees with. That is unfortunately not possible. Uh, I think I was also trying to talk to Dogoldu, right? Have I already done that? I've already done that, right? Ulairon was in there. Now it's Mosfell. Uh, then where do I want to send you? Maybe towards Rune. Not that I want... Actually, I don't care about peace with Rune. No, that's not what... I don't want peace with Rune. I want Rune to attack me right now, get their teeth kicked in, and then I can move that army out and about. Alright, you go help Gimli. Just in case... There's going to be a bit of a cold, <laughs> get it, because it's snowy, war between us and Angmar. I'm actually not proud of that pun, please don't hold it against me. Alright. I really do not know what the doom stack, I, I never know it's going to be a doom stack, what it's going to have. But seeing, like, that's my logic. It's been announced, which typically doesn't happen in scripts. Typically they give you only, like, very short notice. Like, oh, you'll be attacked in four turns. But seeing as we've been warned from the start of the campaign, we've been given every opportunity to prepare. So, oh no. Okay. Law wise, bad news. Gameplay wise, great news. Ered Luin accepts the gift from the Messenger of Sauron. We have received a rather terse message from Ered Luin that states simply the Blue Mountains stand alone. There had been rumoured that a dark emissary had visited the mountains, and what agreement or bargain has been struck we cannot know. We do know that the dwarves of the Blue Mountains have, if only temporarily, shut down all diplomatic negotiations. Surely for them to agree to such a thing, the gift must have been very generous indeed. So we are looking towards a dwarven civil war, because if Ered Luin betrays us, then we might have to cleanse the mountains. I really like that from a gameplay perspective because it's going to lead up to some exciting stuff. And I'm actually going to pull in the Sons of the Fallen and park the other guys and see if I can already retrain them. No. How many turns? 38. And seeing as that's almost a completely demolished unit, it will take the full 38 turns. Uh, right. No attack just yet. Well, it might be delayed by like one turn or something. We'll see. Edward got the mining network finished, so even more money to be made. I could go straight to the mining complex. That would bring in even more money. 2.3k from mining, 3.1k. That's an extra 800 gold. Or oh, do I want to prioritize something else? Now, I think we get that early on, and it's just going to like accelerate the entire campaign. You also got an armory, because I can't build anything else there. Because I exterminated the people there. It's going to take forever to grow. Well, yeah, so be it. So be it. Robbie, on the uh, previous episode, actually wrote up a nice story about how it came to be that the people were exterminated. It was because uh, we got drunk partying after victory, and then we accidentally, yeah, they broke their alliances, signed uh, an order to exterminate the town completely by accident, completely in our drunken stupor state. I really like that touch. To give, I really like that, just like giving an entire lore explanation for me just misclicking. <laughs> Alright, uh, let's just train everything we can, because our um, recruitment is always going to be a bit of a bottleneck, because there's not that many dwarves. We need more dwarf ladies! So whenever we can train something, we will train it. Uh, these guys need more culture, yeah. Okay. Uh, press the unturn again, it doesn't bother me to be saving some money, unless... Wait, I still need to move my diplomats. Uh, yeah, you go... I don't know. Oh, to Dorwinian, right. A faction I completely forgot existed. <laughs> and you can travel in the direction of, like, Harad, the other name. Keep an eye on the goblins. They're doing siege to Mithelberg. There's Goblin Town, which 
will probably be my next prize to claim. We'll see how that goes. Me and what army, of course. Uh, you can stay in Edabor for now. We're also keeping an eye on Thranduil, the ring bearer. Oh, yeah. Oh. For a moment I thought he had passed on the ring and we didn't know. As long as he sticks in Thranduil's halls, that's good, because the ring can only go to an evil faction if they kill the general who has the ring. So Dol Guldur would have to destroy Thranduil in order to get the ring. So as long as that doesn't happen, which... Well, Thranduil's halls won't fall 35 turns in. We should be good. Alright, where's the attack? It should be now, unless my calculations are way off. 37 at the latest. Watch me pull out all my troops, assuming it doesn't happen, and then it happens right away. Maybe they're scared. Maybe I've put too many troops in there, and they're like, whoa. -oh. Imnadris under siege, okay. Invasion! Ah, there we go. Barely two years since the Dark Messenger had come that the Outriders of Dale see the army coming towards them, for they made no attempt at hiding their presence, as their mere size alone would win them the fight. Good, I like the sound of that. Swiftly they return and told both kings about the invading army, for just as my lord Elrond, rest in peace, predicted that Sauron's hand enter the field. With nearly much time to finalize the defenses was the army upon us, so vast and armored it was that it turned twilight into brightest day. The golden horde of Rune had come. The king of the lonely mountain turned to his dwarves, and as he raised his axe high, in defiance he cried, Baruk Kazad, Kazad Aymenu. And in the throat of every man and dwarf was this cry answered back, Baruk Kazad, Kazad Aymenu. Let's go, oh lord, Sadun brought the big gun. Ooh, okay, that is, that is an elite rune army. It doesn't get more elite than this. This is pretty much <laughs> as crazy as they could have gone. Nice. Thank you, Swan. I appreciate that a lot. That's going to be so much fun. Um, I want to do a defensive siege, right? I don't want them. I don't want to attack them. Even though that costs me like 3,000 this turn, that's fine. I like uh, defensive sieges more from a gameplay perspective, and also it's more cinematic. <laughs> Makes more sense. All right, Kirigathol got the Master Stoneworkers Hall. Wonderful. Um, Rokani Hall, possibly, if I can get the upgrade. No, not yet. What do I need for that? Uh, there we go. Boop. Armorer. Wasn't I building an armorer? Yeah, okay, let's get an armorer then. And Bergram got the garrison quarters. I can train troops there, wonderful. Let us get Ironmongers. Okay. Yeah, the Easterlings of Rune have played that card. Fine by me. Uh, I'll do all the retraining in Framsburg, why not? It's a bit of a bonus. Oh, there we go. Um, okay. Okay, I think that's all then. Keep an eye on Angmar, but no movement there. Move my diplomat, etc. And then press the end turn and hope that we. Uh, let's go to Finable. Get attacked. I must stop here, sire. And you go to the Sea of Rune towards Karasant and the other settlements. Alright, press the end turn, be attacked, I hope. You have no idea how much I'm looking forward to this. Rune, obviously, those of you who've been with the channel for any period of time will know that it's my favorite faction, both in the game and um, in the lore. I don't know why, just as a kid watching the movies. No, they're they're leaving. Why are you leaving? Oh, that's annoying. <laughs> they're probably, I've probably overdone it with my troops. I probably have too many and they're scared. So do I go out and face them on the field? Yeah, I probably should, because otherwise... Oh, no, never mind. They've... Triggered the attack. Good. Okay. Um, let's save. Bounce of Power is not in my favor, which is surprising, considering how many troops I have. I do hope this is a siege battle. We'll see. Um, but yeah, let's defend our lonely, lonely mountain. Oh, right. We are in the mountain. With some trees, for some reason. <laughs> Start deployment. Oh, it's a little... Jittery, probably because there's so many troops on the field. Uh, I might have just broken the game by moving everyone at once. Why am I like this? Izzy sees that the game is unstable. Let's move all the troops at once. Oh, please don't crash. I might have just already straight up crashed the game. <laughs> Alright, ah, there we go. No, never mind, never mind. Alright, so what is it? What is it like? So they got that catapult and that ballist on the front. There's a city of Dale. I always really like that. You could see one settlement from the other. And if you besiege Dale, you can also see Edabor, which is such a nice touch. 
There is the Golden Horde. They're freezing out there. Not really their kind of temperature. Which I think actually helps us. I think we get like a small bonus fighting in snow. No? Yeah, terrain bonus snow. They probably have a terrain malice. Wonderful. Okay. Doesn't make too much of a difference, but it makes somewhat of a difference. Can I put troops on the ramparts? I can. Ooh, interesting. Let's see. Who do I want to put on the ramparts? Well, the longbows will go in the center, obviously. And maybe the axe throwers already as well? Yeah, let's put the axe throwers and the longbows on the ramparts. Uh, how are we going to go about this? We got Dane. What does Dane look like? Does he have his red axe? No, he looks pretty basic actually. That's a shame, because he had such a nice campaign strategy model. There's Dwalin. Looks pretty standard as well. And there is my random general number three with Sons of Durin. Alright, so the catapult is going to do the heavy lifting, because this beauty, there it is, oh, there it was, can actually switch between three fighting modes. Regular mode, flaming, grape shot, and flaming is actually a mortar shot, so that's the three modes. you got regular shot, mortar shot, and grape shot, which is like a blunderbuss. I'm not sure why my longbows are down there, they're supposed to be up here. Okay. So I kind of want to keep them in position here, to lock them in, and then have the catapult just grape shot them to bits. And that's actually going to make this fairly easy. So I want... I, I'm going to put my general here, but make sure that they're behind the catapult. The general is behind the catapult. I will put one Erebor infantry in front as a second layer. It's not too bad if those get shot to bits. Uh, Privateer Axis. The expendable ones, you know. Laborers on this side, the flank. I'll have to move them once the battle starts. With Matox as well. I don't want to lose any generals. But if this one dies, that's the least of my concern. Go there. The travelers I'll put here. Cav. I could move out the Cav already. They do have Loki Nasrim. But I, I was just thinking of moving the Cav to like... To run away, quote unquote. I don't think they'll chase me. And then once the battle properly starts and they've committed that Loki Nazarim, then my Cav can take to the field. I think that's a good idea. You know what? I'll do that with two Cav units. Because it's a bit risky. And then I'll save one Cav just in case. Which I'll put on the town square. Dwarves. Okay. Uh, this Ballista I'll also keep as a reserve. I don't want to commit it right away. The Axe Guard of Erebor are also a bit of an ace, which I don't want to commit right away. But only when like that general pops up, then we'll have him throw his stuff. Sons of the Fallen, and you go hide there. And then an extra unit of Matox, which I will put also on this right side. Alright, laddies. The battle commences. Ah, she's a delicate one. Du Bekar! Let's go, lads! Baruch Gazat. Loving the music. I could try to attack the siege equipment, but that's not the plan. Alright, men of Dale, run, run, run. Where is that siege equipment going? You're supposed to be breaking down the gates. Longbow, stop fighting. We don't want to kill them. We want them to come inside. That is where we crush them. Oh, we need to be a bit careful. Can I go down this slope? I think I can. Make sure that my cab doesn't get caught off. Oh, the Lugnarim are firing at us. And they have fire. That's good. I'm feeling a bit cold. Thank you for warming me up. Alright. Hurry, cavalry. Hurry. Oh, there's a bit of a... Ew, I don't like being cut off here. I think I'd rather go here. So I still have a bit of a maneuverability there. Alright, Labour. And then the Anvil Matox. Mm, sounds like I'm actually going to move you here. Because if I can have this corner for the Axe Guard, then I'll be a very happy camper. Alright, use your siege equipment. I think this entire episode is just going to be this battle, and I'm not even mad if that is the case, and I doubt you guys will be either. <laughs> Alright, he's keeping his Loki Nazrim in position, which is good. He probably just thinks, oh, those cowards of Dale trying to get out. 
took their horses. Because they don't know what I know. They are... They still use those kind of standard catapults, you know, they are... They're pretty much cavemen compared to us with our superior technology. So let them throw their big, loud, lumpy rocks. Go ahead. Miss everything. That's the thing with grape shot, right? It's gonna have like an accuracy of like 900%. For those of you who have never seen grape shot in action, I mean, I don't want to hype it up too much and then have it completely whiff. Sometimes it does some weird shit, but most of the time it is absolutely the deadliest weapon in this entire game. It's like arming one dwarf with a shotgun with pretty much infinite ammo. Uh, stop, stop fighting, the gate is that okay, Whew. I thought I was just gonna hurl rocks at Dean, that would scare me a little bit, it only takes one lucky shot to take us down. Alright, who wants, uh, where are you guys going? Uh, lads, the gate is open. Speak friend and enter. Oh, they are still fighting those bastards. Surely they're not gonna hit me. But the ballista might, the catapult, surely not. Uh, that would take an incredibly lucky shot to hit that, and I don't want to change my positioning. Just keep an eye out on the unit cards here. If you ever see like an, a red icon with an arrow on it, that means someone got hit. But right now it looks like no one's getting hit. Mm. Guys, remember this song? It's from the first episode. The cold open. Alright. What the hell is this? Take down the catapult. Oh, one of my axe throwers. Oh, my infantry got hit. They look very similar, the uh, infantry and the axe throwers. It's the same design, just different weapons. Stop that. In the name of King Dane, stop that. You are wasting your ammo. And I'm wasting mine, to be fair. I probably shouldn't be fighting at the catapult, but hey. If I can bring them down to just two guys, then they can stop. There we go. Two guys cannot fight a catapult, I think. What is it? Three guys. Yep, no, they're idle. Let the ballista use up its ammo and then they'll go in for the attack. Oh, are we moving? Yeah, we're moving, lads. And he's sending in the cavalry first. Axe throwers! You may fire. Oh, not really fire. You may throw when ready. Look at him. This is our mountain. Your mother was a hamster, and your father smells of elderberries. Come on, that's... We're getting some axes thrown. Uh, a bit of a delay, but we'll probably get the infantry. Alright. The cab is in. I should already have my catapult fighting. Because, see, they're already going... They're already shoving themselves through, which is very annoying. I might already have to send in like a reinforcement. She is a beauty, but use her, and use her well. One shot is all it really takes to completely demolish an entire unit. Come on, Catapult, I've been hyping you up like crazy, don't let me down. Yes. <laughs> you better fucking tremble right now, mate. <laughs> You have no idea what I'm about to unleash on you. So it just fires all these kind of small pellets, but every pellet is a kill. It is absolutely gruesome. Look at that. They're trying to get through, but they're, they're too thick. We cannot get in. <laughs> it's a bit of a reverse of the Moria scenario. Well, you haven't spoken friend, so another shot, please. Come on. Oh. Too cinematic for me. Zoom back in. Oh, yeah. It's hard to tell exactly how many are dying, because they're so clustered up. But trust me, the answer is many. And the few looking as them to get through will quickly get demolished by the Sons of the Fallen. 
Look at that. Every little cloud of mist you see, that's someone dying. A horrible death. All right, Privet Tech, you are shoving yourselves in a bit too deep. I am not responsible for what the catapult unleashes. Another shot, come on. I want to get like 2,000 kills with this thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 6 percent for 30 percent. Oh, they're already starting to rout. That's why I brought the cavalry outside. Because I knew that was going to happen. Baruch Gazad! Gazad, I'm in Where did that shot go? That seemed to have missed terribly. Make sure they don't disrupt my catapult. The catapult is sacred. We must protect it at all costs. This catapult will win us many wars. And I can't wait to have more. Come on, another shot. Point blank, baby. Just, just do it. Hurry, please. No, they're not listening. Well, I mean... They've already done quite a lot of damage, so I'm already pleased. But yeah, because now they're pushing through, which is really annoying. If only ah damn it, I wanted to use a shield wall on the Sons of the Fallen, but his ability like overrides it. So as long as he has the ability, he won't he won't do it. Mm, yeah, they're shoving through too hard. Oh, there's the Logan in bodyguard. Pull back the catapult crew, don't let them get destroyed. Looking at 12% for 56% though, I mean... Can't really complain with those numbers. And if I can just like overlay the abilities a bit... They're gonna have a very hard time doing any damage to us. And then morale will start dropping. Just all in all, they are not gonna have a good time. There are bodyguards in there somewhere, yeah. He's already taken damage. From my axe throwers. The axe guard of Erebor. Do what their name entails. They guard Erebor with that axe. You already got some runners, eh? Let's go give them a hand. Should have already sent them my cavalry a bit sooner, actually. Because if I do a sandwich here, that might just work. Oh, how are you? No, no, no. Pull back. Oh, it's actually that cav unit that I had to move. Um, yeah. Come here. Oh, boat. Fighting. Oh, yeah, that morale is completely shot. Yes. Captured him. Ah, perfect. I like that. We can interrogate him. Why are you here? What are you doing here? Who send you? Sauron. And perhaps we should pay him a visit, eh? Those are some nice mountain ranges you got there in the Eiffel Duath. Would be a shame if you got some new neighbours, eh? Alright, the last few remnants putting up a fight, but the cav is coming in. The cavalry from Dale, thank you, Dale. Thank you for your assistance. But of course, more troubling is the news from Ereduin, right? Yes. Throw your axes at them, look at that. This is my land, bitch. So it seems that... Uh, it's actually funny, because another YouTuber, Rampant, who I highly recommend, I'll try to remember to put a link to his channel in the description. He's doing an Ered Luin campaign, I believe he went evil, and he's about to attack the Dwarves of Erebor, so it's kind of a reverse scenario of what will happen in this campaign, I think. So that's quite fun. Alright, they're running. I think it's just the Ballista crew that's standing, everyone else is beat. Oh, and the catapult crew, all two of them. They're just standing there, I hope the battle's going well inside. <laughs> oh, it's not looking good. Where did you come from? No, please. I can help you man your catapults. Ah, we don't need you. We've got Dwarven Engineers. The best. Ivy League degrees and all that jazz. Wonderful. It's always the Ballista crew. 
I'm telling you, when nuclear war happens, it'll be the ballista crew that will <laughs> just completely take over the world. Yeah, just they're like cockroaches. You just cannot bring them down, keep them down. Always the last ones. It's kind of struggling, wiggling away. But there we go, lads. We have absolutely crushed the Golden Horde. Place your predictions. How many kills did the catapult get? I'm thinking... I'm thinking 900, which is less than I had hoped, but I'm still quite pleased with that. Let's see. So we healed also a decent chunk at 12%. Only 266 casualties. Yes. I agree. Right. Axe kind of about got 800, which is already really good. Catapult. 427 only. Oh, okay. So the Axe got actually got significantly more kills. With their body piercing throwing axes, of course. But still, that's, I mean, 427 is really good. So they combined, those two units combined kill 1.2k, which is fantastic, which is uh, pretty much half, yeah, pretty much half the army was killed by just those two. So yeah, n really nice result. We have uh, definitely sent a strong signal to both the Easterlings of Rune and the Dark Lord Sauron of Mordor. You don't mess with the Dwarves of Erebor and live to tell the tale. Hell yeah, eat snow. Yes. All right. Do we get an extra message from that? No, but we do get a message saying that uh, the Elven Doomstack has happened. That last stand. Well, good luck to them. The High Elves, I should say, not the uh, the Wood Elves. All right. Good stuff. And uh, let's see. Nargothron got roads finished. Very nice. I think we can actually turn this into a nice settlement as well. Yeah, decent mines, extra culture, extra population growth. Perfect. Franzburg at the brewery. Boop, boop, boop. What else do I want? Can I get upgraded mines here? Yes, I can because it's a castle. So we can get the mining network for extra culture and population growth. Yep. Yeah. Seems like a no-brainer. Man. I want Mithril. <laughs> but no, no, no. We're not, we're, not, we're not evil dwarves, right? We will fight the dwarves of Erdluin if they, you know, not stand by us. But the dwarves of Khazadum, they're still good in our book, so... Right, anyway, we have uh, survived the Battle of Erebor. We'll do some retraining of these lads. Uh, let's actually prioritize some certain troops so I can get this army moving. Uh, or if I do some, some clever merging, I think we might uh, get away with it. Let's see. Uh, this this entire army is such a mess. Dale Cav, yes. Orders. So I only have to retrain one Dale Cav. Travelers. The laborers. I should be able to do something with them, right? I saw it. Then I only have to retrain the one laborer unit. I got two units of Matox. If I merge them, then I only have to retrain the one. And these are all, yeah, single units pretty much. Except for the axe guard, or the axe throwers. Retrain them, and the Erebor infantry. That would take two turns, and then I'm ready to go. Wonderful. And let's repair the wall, of course, as well. The gate. Wonderful. Um, so in two turns, I'll have a, a pretty fresh army ready to go. I'm not exactly sure what I'll do yet. I kind of want to like see if I can grab a boat and sail down. If there's like a mercenary boat available. Otherwise, I don't know. I kind of want to go to Goblin Town and just leave Rune alone for now. Until I have an army like Kirigathal. Dale is doing surprisingly well against Rune, seeing as they still hold... Um, is that Mirairon? Here, the settlement there. They still hold it, so, you know, I'm not too fussed about that. No mercenaries. So, I don't know. That's kind of where I'm at. Any mercenaries here? No. Alright, press the enter. Next season. Alright. I think I've almost done all my diplomacy work for now. Like, the uh, preliminary trade rights round... Everyone loves some good trade rights, right? But yeah, so the Runic Doomstack has been pushed back. I have a full army at my uh, disposal. An army so strong, whatever I send it, it's gonna completely destroy. If I send it to the goblins, I can absolutely squash the goblins with that army, I think. Unless they pull out a Balrog out of nowhere. Which you should always account for. If I send it to Rune, I'm not sure if I can take down all of Rune, but yeah. Long was the battle fought, and hard won was the victory achieved. Not by strength of arms alone, but in friendship between man and wolf was the lonely mountain protected and made secure. 
Gone is Sauron's trump card, crumbled in his plan, and with renewed vigour will the dwarven counterattack be made. Long have the dwarves harboured a hatred unending of the orcs and goblins who stole their home, but once again is that hatred blazed to full strength, but not to the petty slaves but instead to their master. The fury of the dwarves has been awoken and the Dark Lord shall feel the bite of their axes. Baruch Kazad, Kazad Aymenu. Very nice. Well written text as well, I really like that. Hello Kazaima, you want to trade? I will trade you iron for Mumakil. Can you imagine dwarves riding a Mumakil? Oh. I'm allowed to have wet dreams, right? Let's go to guard them. Alright, lots of stuff here. Uh, that's just a repair. Dane's Hall's got the roads. Get extra troops. Wonderful. At this rate, I won't even need the reinforcements. Um, what's my culture like? 44%. I'm just kind of thinking, just getting more stuff. Some people have actually pointed out something I need to check. If I upgrade my um, trade building... What is it? Where is it? Roads, ports, master build, blacksmith, siege wages, and... It's in city, isn't it? Trade, 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 trade. Food production? No, trade. Where's the trade build? Am I blind? I am blind, am I not? Mithril mines? I'd love that. that. It's more than that, trust me. Um, marketplace, there we go. That if I get the highest tier of it, I do actually get access to train merchant troops? No, that doesn't seem to be the case. That's probably for Edit Luin, I guess. Or, or Bree for sure. I know Bree gets the troops from their merchants, but whatever. Uh, right, anyway, mining network, I guess. Culture, population, money, that's just everything I need. Things are looking quite good, actually. Like I'm really, really pleased. Um, Arcani Clan Hall. Or a practice range. Or a Great Roads. How much do Great Roads actually make? Is it a big difference? Let's see, 258, 389, not that big of a difference. This isn't the really most trade-worthy settlement either, though. But on Aznar is where I can get Dragon Slayers of Erid Mithrin, so I want the population growth to go fast. Is the pig farm the best way to do it, then? That is uh, food production. Not really. Food production does give me population growth, but, like, not that much. I think I'd rather have... I don't know. Actually, nothing gives me... Does the uh, next tier of the culture building gives me population growth? I'm still finding my way. I don't play dwarves a lot, you can tell. Uh, what is it? Pleasure? Yeah. Mm, it does give happiness. I wonder why. Uh, no, let's get roads then. Anyone else I need to build? Uh, Graham got the Ironmongers. I get those laborers. Uh, get a practice range. I'll leave those troops in there for now because they get free upkeep. Uh, but I will move these troops, even though they get free upkeep, to the front line. Just because I kind of want to start preparing an army, and I don't really need the troops here. They don't really serve much of a purpose. Alright, culture's going up fast. What about Erebor? Uh, not Erebor, Gundabad, 23%. Okay, we're getting there. The Hall of Durin is almost finished. Then we can get the Hammers of Gundabad. Oh, oh, oh. I can't wait to send those loose on... Uh, the goblins of Moria, they will have no idea what hit them. Uh, right. Yeah, uh, so right now, my personal thinking is to send the army to the goblins of Moria. And actually, I don't need to wait, do I? I don't need to wait for those retraining lads. That can already become part of my second army, right? So what we will do is get the troops that have already been retrained. Or, well, mostly retrained, and uh, already send them to the front line. We already have some troops there as well. I'll send. I'll keep Dwalin around. Actually, he can lead the next army. He can go to war against Rune. That kind of. I don't know. I feel like that's befitting of him. Uh, Arches. Combining the army, and then the cavalry. So that's a pretty nice force. If I meet them up with those few troops that have already been moving around, these guys, and then the other guys. That can actually already be a decently sized army. And then I retrain the lads in there, retrain these lads as well. And that can become part of the army that will go towards Rune. I can already train many more troops here. I just need more recruitment slots, really. That's something I'll have to prioritize. And then I'll get the Orokani Hall, 
gets an extra equipment slot, get extra troops, get the Otakani upgraded hall. It's gonna be glorious, it's gonna be glorious. And you, my friend, are no longer needed in Edinburgh. You can already go spy on our border with Rune. So I already have troops ready to go here as well, so once we move Dwarden's army past here, then those guys will join. Which is pretty convenient, because then I can fight a two-war, or a two-front war. Which is, uh, cool. I, I find it cool. <laughs> It's not strategically uh, the best choice always, but hey, who needs strategy where we're going? I forgot to talk to the Winian. That's okay. Um, because maybe we'll get a mission out of it. They'll be like, hey, talk to the Winian and you get one free unit of Dwarven Catapults. <laughs> that would be way too nice if I could just spam Dwarven Catapults. Imagine having an entire army of those just... Grape shotting away, or an entire army of the Axe God of Erebor. I do believe the Axe God of Erebor could 1v1 Sauron, actually. Body piercing is incredibly powerful. Alright, hey, lads. You use Axe Body Spray, I use Axe Body Piercing. We are not the same. Alright, it's Rare Gemstone. Very nice. Okay. The other name and Dolamra thought at war. It took him long enough. It's almost 40 turns in. Uh, where is my spy? Ah, oh, there he is. He blends in so nicely with the background, it's hard to see. I mean, I guess he's a spy, right? It makes sense, but... Alright, lads, you keep moving. My king. I guess I could also go to war against Angmar, but I'm not at war with Angmar yet with neutral, whilst I am at war with the goblins. And if I take Goblin Town and then go to war with Angmar... That's Radagast. Then I can actually do a two-pronged attack on Angmar. From the north and the south, which is... I don't know, seems like a good idea. To me. Taking Goblin Town will just completely shut down anything they're trying to achieve. Alright, let's make sure I'm building everywhere that I can build. Yes. Check for training. Okay. Catapult, swordsman, yes. Can't retrain the calf, that's fine for now. Um, but I should be able to retrain the calf. No more units of this type available, there's one right here. Strange. Uh, we'll check that in a bit. Um, yeah, Longbows. I love me some longbows. Right, another end turn then. We are blazing past these turns. Crap, I forgot to talk to the Winion again. I'm just going to wait for the mission at this point. It has to come, right? Unless I already traded the Winion, that's a possibility. I don't know. I don't check all these things. If you want to, like, min-max your campaign, that's the first thing you do, like, open the diplomacy screen and check your your standings with all factions. But it matters not when you have mines raking in money like crazy and pumping out troops like not as crazy, but crazy to a certain degree. Crazy enough. Right? Aye. Uh, let's, let's check. Dominion, Dominion, Dominion. Well, we're allied, so yeah, we're, yeah, we already have trade rights. It doesn't actually matter at all. Alright, Kirigathal got the armorer, so now I should be able to get the Orokani big hall, yeah, the royal hall, which gives me the Stonefoot and Stiff Bear troops, <clears throat> which I already had, but then a really good shock infantry, the Iron Fist Hammers, really nice unit. Blacklock Engineers, probably the best crossbow unit in the game. 13 missile attack, arm piercing, can use stakes as well. And then the Blacklock Ballista and Blacklock Catapult, courtesy of 4th uh, Age. Or a 3rd Age Sword Award 4.0, not 4th Age Sword Award, that's something else. Uh, so we'll get those, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And then Berg Ram got the practice range, so that's Axe Throwers covered. Um, might as well get the Ballista make it, eh? Might as well. Please tell me I can retrain the calf. No, that's so bizarre. Don't know why that's the case. Alright, um... I didn't bring the catapult to the goblins, that's actually maybe a mistake. I don't know, is it a mistake? I feel like we have our weapon of mass destruction with the Axe God of Erebor, and then the army that will move to Rune will probably benefit more from the catapult. Although I'd really like to see the goblins get completely demolished, it's probably overkill, because they have like, barely any armor. So we'd crush them easily with everything else, right, so... Alright lads, uh, how many troops are we missing? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven short of a dooms- well, dooms, like a full army. You can get those archers. You can get all of them, really. 
Wait, that's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we can get one more unit in. Another labor unit, why not? Alright. And the plan is right now to take Goblin Town and just kind of hold it for now. Don't want to immediately go attack it. Well, continue our attack. We don't want to, like... I want to kind of savor taking down the Oaks of Moria. I don't know why. Is that weird? That's probably weird, but that's okay. Weird is okay, lads. There's nothing wrong with being a bit weird. Alright, more lads. Good. We're actually going to have a decent army already to take down Rune. Uh, anything else? Don't think so. Alright. Right, I was also repairing the, uh, the catapult. So that makes sense. Makes sense to uh, postpone that attack a little bit. And yeah, I mean, Rune is like heavily armored and all that, and the grape shot, it doesn't care. Everything it hits, it kills. It even kills Mumakil in one shot, I'm pretty sure. Maybe two max, just because they have more hit points. But it doesn't look at armor, so... It is actually a complete waste to use it against um, the Goblins of Moria, who haven't invented armor yet. Alright, there's Giliath's under attack. Sucks to be Gondor. I'm sorry, Ligist. I love Gondor, really, but... Well... Aye. Oh, I can get mercenaries. Ah, nothing I really want. Let's go sit in the fort. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Poor goblins. Won't even know what hit them. They'll be sitting in the spy south and then, or north and see this fort just filled to the brim with dwarfs drinking beer and eating pork. Ugh. Oh, it's a good day to be a dwarf. Alright, we got mines in Framsburg. Let's upgrade them right away. Let's keep the spy a moving. Something to investigate. They were all uh, marling as well. There's Athelwyn. Will he Athel win or will he Athel lose? We'll find out soon, but so far Rune is uh, just not doing a whole lot. I guess I can use my diplomat to also take a peek. If they've done anything against Dorwinian, but doesn't really look like it. Kili! Ah, oh, that's a nice name. Okay. Oh, what was that? Financially, it was a very Luin, yeah, I mean. No big surprise there. Eredwin and Angmar are allies. Oh lord, that's gonna be a big brutal war for the uh, the north there. Oh yo yo, that's terrible news. Terrible news indeed. All right, train anything? No. Okay. All right, we'll press the end turn one more time just so we have the horse up to it and finished. And I think that's a nice place to stop the recording. Won't be an overly too long campaign, but I kind of want to leave the war with the goblins for the next episode. So every episode always has like a highlight, right? Something that stands out, something I can make a cool thumbnail out of. <laughs> and taking Goblin Town is definitely uh, pretty high up the list. And we do have to rename Goblin Town once we take it, right? So uh, I will host a bit of a... How do I say that? A bit of a, a quest for you guys. A bit of a challenge to come up with a cool name for Goblin Town. Not on this video, because we haven't taken it yet, but you can already start thinking about it. We'll probably be on the next one where we take Goblin Town. I mean, Dwarven Town, that's a bit... That's a bit straightforward, right? But I'm sure you guys can come up with a great name. Right, trade and give me an extra unit of Dwarven Catapult. Thank you, I'll take it. Ah, fine, that's fine. Harad. Harad and the other name are at war. So, the other name are just declaring war to everyone in that area. Dolamroth, Gondor, now Harad. That's not going to go well for them. Alright, roads and board. I make too much money, I don't know what to do with it. I can start buying settlements at this space. I'll just buy Casa Doom, that sounds like a great idea. Um, I think I want to train troops here. Let's get the Master Stone Workers Hall to speed everything else up. Dane's Hall's got the mining network. I mean, is anything stopping me from going for the complex right away? Don't think so. Do it! <clears throat> And then Mount Gundabad got the Hall of Durin. So now we have bonuses. A global law bonus, which is really nice. Free upkeep units up the wazoo. Retraining cost reduction. Tradable goods. Law bonus here as well. And I can get these glorious bastards with 33 defense, 15 attack, armor piercing, stakes, inspiration, frighten nearby enemy. Just <laughs> ridiculous units. Can I get them right away? I can get them right away. And it's only, quote unquote, 25 turns till the next available unit. That's not that crazy, actually. 
as long as an armor piercing, they'll be quite good against Angmar as well. Right, uh, let's turn my Ungundabad into a unit production center the likes you've never seen before. Where do we start? Where do we start? I'd love to get the mining network too for the increase, but I have enough money. I should really look towards troops. So what's my culture like? 31%. So that's enough, actually. Yeah, it's just a matter of waiting out of timers or building the upgrade. What do I need for the upgraded barracks? Steelmonger and then Armored. And that's where I get my top tier units, right? Yeah, we'll need more culture, but by the time we're there, we'll have it. So I need a Steelmonger. Okay, that's good. That is bueno. Um, yeah, did all that. Doot, 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 Erebor. I mean, I'll train more troops, but I'm already going to move this army out. So Dwalin, you will lead an attack on Rune. You will ruin their day. Get the infantry, axe throwers, get the laborers, longbows, swordsmen. Any interesting mercs? I'll take travelers. Uh, and then pass through Kirigathon and Burgram and pick up some extra troops from there. Glorious. Alright. Let's double check. I got some troops here that I could have used, but it's fine. Unar! Let us move you. I forgot to put a watchtower here. That would have actually helped a bit. It's okay. Soon we'll hold all these lands. Oh, look! They've taken Maithelberg. That's annoying. Hmm. I guess I can take Maithelberg and give it to the Anduin Vale. Yeah, let's move you away from Latash for a moment. My watchtower actually has view. So the plan is to take Maithelberg real quick then, in the next episode of course, and uh, give that to the Anduin Vale. Give it back to them and then attack Goblin Town. Oh, I don't actually have any siege equipment. That's a bit of a misplay on my part. Should have brought at least one ballista. Don't I have a ballista? I, can greet you, but not so I do have a ballista. Okay, I'll bring it over. Um, yeah, okay. That's going to be it for today's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We had, of course, the big battle at Erebor, which uh, we completely demolished with the catapult. And now, well, the world is our uh, our oyster. We can do whatever the hell we want. We already have an army moving here. It's Walden, who will pick up extra reinforcements from Burkram and Kirigathol. Including some Orokani Dwarfs, the Stiff Beard Archers, and the Stonefoot Spearmen. Uh, they will go to war against the Rune. Just, we'll see what kind of damage we can do. And then, of course, we have the very large army under command of Odar. That will lay down the hammer upon the Goblins of Moria. Kick their teeth in. We, of course, also got the really, really bad news. That the Dwarves of Eredluin have accepted Sauron's gift. Something we, of course, didn't do. So now they have sided with our enemies, they are already allied with Angmar, and uh, they will probably uh, attack us if given the opportunity, so we cannot stand to that. I mean, the dwarves inherently aren't evil, they're just under evil leadership, so it's best that we uh, remove that leadership and take control of the Blue Mountains ourselves. So there we go, hope you guys enjoyed the episode, and I hope to catch you on Monday for episode number 7. Thank you guys.